So I think we are recording right now. So hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. Uh, we are very delighted today to have uh, Mr. Fry Mizahantu today with us. Uh, Mr. Fry is a, a president at One Quantum Africa, and he is leading a huge, a huge initiative in, in, in quantum computing in Africa. Uh, I will not uh, talk about a lot about him. Uh, I will leave the floor all to him to introduce uh, himself and, and his amazing efforts for quantum computing in Africa. But first, I believe that uh, Professor Yunus would like to say a few words first to uh, to Mr. Fry and to the audience, and then uh, the floor is all yours. Uh, hello, Mr. Fry. Uh... Can you hear me? Hello, Mr. Fry. Uh, uh, hello. We are Hi. really glad to have you again in Alexandria Quantum Computing Group. Uh, you are really doing uh, a, a wonderful job in, in Africa. Uh, your initiative is really appreciated and we would like to, to, to help you uh, uh, in this initiative. And you are welcome and the mic is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Yunis. Uh, thank you very much to Karim. <clears throat> and uh, thank you very much for the kind remarks and uh, for the support that I've been enjoying from you and from the community uh, all along. And uh, I will look forward to a lot of initiatives together and uh, to a lot of great things together as well. So it's my pleasure to be here and um, thank you everyone who has managed to attend as well. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, my name is Farai Majandu, as uh, Karim has mentioned, and Professor Yunis. Uh, um, from Zimbabwe, I studied at the University of Witts in South Africa, and I was studying uh, experimental quantum physics at NSC. So my work was to was twofold. Um, <clears throat> I excuse me. I all I I did um, a, a characterization of uh, devices that were. Uh, made of synthetic diamond, which is diamond that we were making in the lab. And uh, for those devices, we wanted to use them for quantum information processing or to investigate if they could be used for quantum information <laughs> processing. So on one end, I was testing uh, devices that were pre-made for us by uh, a fabricator in Germany. So uh, characterization is just a heavy word to to indicate that you are testing a device and looking for for its features and uh, you know such that you know how it behaves under different magnetic fields as well as uh, under different temperatures. And in this case, we were investigating these devices at low temperatures because they were superconducting. Uh, I also did a simulation on IBM Q platform uh, where we were trying to look at what would happen if you interfaced um, an NV sender, uh, a system made of NV senders in diamond, which can also be used for quantum information processing with uh, flux qubits. So that has been interesting work and it's work that I could do just by getting access to quantum computers on the cloud. So I hope it's uh, something that uh, some of you consider to to do from the continent. You may you still are able to contribute to this field without leaving the continent. If that is the situation, and you can use a lot of the resources that are available on, on the cloud and uh, communities that are coming up each and every day to support you. Um, let me switch off my video so that I improve our experience in case my network doesn't sustain. Um, and let me take this forward as well and to show you the next slide. OK, so why is it uh, important that we talk about quantum in Africa? Because yes, I'm going to talk about the global quantum tech landscape uh, so that we see where we are. But it is also important that I give it context and say, why is this uh, very important work? Or why is this something very important for us to consider in Africa? So when I was doing MSc, after I finished the MSc, rather, that is when uh, we had the QSKIT camp in South Africa. So we, we got that as an African community uh, under, under that uh, hackathon. There was a summer school, and then there was a hackathon that followed. And when I was there, I began to realize 
something that I've not experienced during my studies, which was the power of a community. During my studies, uh, quantum computing wasn't as popular as it is now. So you realize that I worked uh, uh, more like with people from the lab who I knew uh, personally. And beyond that, there wasn't so much support. There wasn't so much community. If the communities were there, I was not aware of them. And I, didn't, I did not have access to them. So my work involved, you know, going on YouTube, listening to videos from thought leaders in the field, and coming back to the group to discuss, uh, to know that to understand the issues. And it was, uh, it was so difficult in London. So when we had that opportunity of having the summer school and having the whole of Africa coming together, <clears throat> excuse me, it was an amazing experience. And there is a lot of um, collaboration that she took off from there. And uh, because uh, I managed to extend a bit of the work that I was doing uh, on, on the IBMQ platform, like I mentioned earlier, uh, <clears throat> people thought I was, I knew, I knew more and I could help other people who were interested in the field. And uh, unfortunately, I did. I was, I was also just getting started. I was figuring out how things could go. And uh, it made me realize that we needed a community beyond everything else. And what was the community going to do? It was going to also help me answer some of these questions that were coming from the people who knew me personally and those who reached out to me on, uh, on the various platforms on social media and uh, elsewhere. So I needed more answers. There are things that I couldn't answer. And uh, it also means that there were a lot of people who were interested to, to contribute and participate in the field who were looking for opportunities to do so. So the only way forward was a community because it was going to allow us to reach out broadly we have other people who come to come to the platform so that they can answer questions that we we didn't have answers for. We could do foster collaboration, work on projects, uh, share ideas on how to use the resources that are available on the cloud now, open access resources, and we could take this forward. So on this slide, I show some of the questions that I got, some of the communication that I got from the broader community or from people who were interested. Some of them were experts who wanted to find out how they could, could, could contribute and help to support uh, Africa. And this is uh, what drives me each and every day. This is a, these are the kind of conversations I have each and every day. And this is why it is very important for us in Africa to know about what is happening at a global level, as well as to know about what is happening in Africa. You would, you would be surprised to know that uh, we don't know so much about what is happening in the in, in the continent because we are not connected. But I'm happy to say we are at a different place today because I can be part of this conversation and present on a uh, on a platform that is being uh, run from Egypt. But if things were not always like this. Yes, uh, thanks to uh, COVID and uh, how it you know, accelerated this whole connectivity aspect and working online and the adoption of, um, of tools that allow us to connect faster and better. And that is used, you know, the geographical uh, distance between us. But uh, there is a lot more that uh, we don't know about uh, each other, about the things that we are working on, about the possibilities. When we come together and, you know, put hands together, put hands together and figure out how to solve problems that will trouble us in the continent. So uh, this slide was just capturing that, uh, that conversation that happened uh, online in the different communities and what people are aching to, to see happen in the continent. And uh, we've got a, a lot of young people. We have interest. We've got uh, people from various walks of life, um, non-scientific, um, those from business, the investment community, who believe so much in Africa and want uh, to find a platform where they can you know, contribute. And I think it is important that we come together as a community and we make that happen. Um, so moving on, let me just tell you briefly about One Quantum. So One Quantum Africa, is a um, community platform that brings together people who are interested and active in quantum uh, in the continent so that they can figure out what's next. So it's not like we have all the answers, but uh, we think that when we allow people to come together, then a lot of things can happen. And uh, you know, unimaginable, unimaginable things can happen in terms of potential and in terms of reach, in terms of impact. 
So One Quantum Africa is a chapter of One Quantum, One Quantum which is a global community which brings together people from various walks of life uh, to, who are interested in quantum, who are active in quantum, non-experts, experts, connect all these people and allow them to figure out how they want to work together. So we believe that when we build strong local communities and we connect these strong local communities to a global community, then we enable a quantum tech industry that is equitable, that is inclusive, that has opportunities for everyone, where everybody can step up and find support, where everybody you know, is welcome. And not only welcome, but when they are in the community, they belong and they realize that you know, people genuinely care and people can genuinely help and people support uh, you know, can, can come through and support them. So how do we do this? So one aspect of it is the community where we come together and we just figure out uh, what's happening. For example, showcasing talent in the continent so that we know who, who, who are the people in the continent who are working in quantum. What are they doing? And what else can we also do? So let's say you are interested to participate. What can you do? What are the opportunities? And so that you don't reinvent the wheel, so that you've got a people that you can ask, that you can talk to, who can tell you about how to navigate uh, in the space and find opportunities, uh, take advantage of opportunities that are available and all this to happen. Uh, we also have mentoring uh, available. And if you've been, if you subscribe to the newsletter that we release every week, you would see that we've been making a lot of noise about how so much we are lacking people from the continent in terms of mentorship. We want people to come on mentorship. We connect them with quantum tech leaders across the world so that they begin to develop real relationships that can develop into real opportunities in quantum. Um, so in that mentoring aspect, we, we are aware that you can be connected. But uh, it's not so obvious that uh, you know, when you are connected, then you know how to mine your network so that you get value out of it and you get opportunities, you take advantage of the opportunities that it presents to you. You would appreciate this uh, or perhaps share it with me to say you may be connected to so many people on LinkedIn or on various platforms or even physically in the communities where you belong. But it's not always obvious that you know how to ask them for help or that you even know what kind of help they can offer you. So we, 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 we think mentoring helps to you know, cover this gap and helps to make us um, figure out how to, to mine our networks. And uh, it is something very important. So I would encourage you guys, it's, it's, uh, I think it's, one of, it's a day before uh, the last day. The last day for registration for mentorship is tomorrow. And uh, please reach out to me or to Karim. You can share details with you on how you can you know, uh, reach out to this opportunity so that we have many people from Africa. I'm always asking uh, Denise and Andre who are in charge of that project to say how many CVs have we received from Africa, uh, how many expression of interest have we received from Africa, because those are the real opportunities that we want people to be able to take. Uh, then we also do careers. So I talked about CVs, and those CVs lead you to these careers in quantum. So we have, um, uh, sorry, we have uh, come, together, come, come together with certain partners who are interested in hiring who are interested in, uh, in, in, in you know, um, taking people up on, on career opportunities. And uh, some of the conversations we have had with these people um, are to the effect that uh, people in Africa are very hardworking. They, these companies and the human resource, resource departments enjoy very much the work ethic that we have in the continent, the kind of energy that is ex, you know, uh, shown by people from the continent. And they are always eager to see more CVs from Africa so that, excuse me, they can consider them for a real career or for a practical, you know, for practical steps in terms of career development. Um, so take advantage of that, send us your CV, we'll put it in the database and um, our career partners will have an opportunity of, of, of seeing that and reach out to you and figure out how, uh, how you can work together. We also have another very important aspect which is, which is on projects. <clears throat> so projects are those important things where quantum technologies are going to, or promise to have impact 
and those are relevant problems that apply to the continent or to our communities. Um, gone are the days when you know solutions will just come made elsewhere. They are simply you know thrust upon us, and we realize that it doesn't work. For example, I think the adoption of um, mobile banking in Africa has been amazing. That it has been tried elsewhere, the, that concept, and it didn't fly. But in Africa, it worked. So it happened because it fits within our context as Africans, and uh, it, was a re it was a relevant solution to a practical problem. So we want to do the same with quantum technologies. We know the problems that we face in our communities. We know the insurmountable challenges we have. And uh, we, want, we want to be able to come together with the, our experts in the continent, some of them in the diaspora, uh, and figure out how to solve those. And uh, so these are, this is why we've got that project section. We have partnered with Strangeworks to make that happen. They've got a beautiful platform which is streamlined for collaboration. And uh, last uh, week, I think it was last week, we had the Caesar from Strangeworks with the chief scientific officer there coming through to our community to share on how we can take advantage of what they've built. And I'll be happy to talk to you guys about this. And also I will be sharing in the newsletter about the projects that we have identified and the project leaders and the project teams that you can join. You can also come through and propose a project and be project leader and lead a team or be part of a team and collaborate with others to make this happen. Um, then beyond gathering leaders in, in in Africa, on weekly calls every week on Wednesday, we are going to bring a summit on May 12 and 13, uh, which is uh, Quantum in Africa Summit and Career Fair. Um, so what this looks like is we we've got um, we've had weekly meetings that some of you may may have joined. So we think naturally you want to get to a point where you bring the whole community together. We make a lot of noise about quantum tech. We bring all the various players, the transdisciplinary across the board. You know, it could be from civic society, it could be those in business, those leading innovation efforts in the continent, those from um, the incubators, everybody. Just like what is happening with other technologies. And we expose them to quantum and say, here is quantum. And uh, this, these are the possibilities, and these are the leading researchers in the continent, and uh, we allow those conversations to happen. And I think we'll figure out how we think is the, is the best way to move forward as a continent. It's not like we, uh, we want a quantum computer tomorrow in the continent. That may not be feasible, but uh, there are things that are within reach. There are low-hanging fruits. There are things that we can start working on today. And uh, that is, this is what is important. We want to contribute to the field as it is unfolding, as it is starting. We don't want to let it pass, well, like what happened with other technologies. And we end up only being consumers. And uh, so we have that opportunity to figure out how to contribute to quantum. And uh, the community is so open at the moment. There are talks, uh, you know, everybody is accessible. And uh, I think there is that realization that we have to make a quantum happen in a different way, looking at the possible impact that it has across the board. So um, the Quantum in Africa Summit is free. It is uh, going to be virtual with amazing speakers. Some of them are the ones that we're showcasing there. Uh, Bob Suter will handle an introduction uh, to quantum session, um, which is a learning session on quantum computing. Uh, we've got Francesco Petrocini, we've got Lesed de Modise, Yasira Ismaili, Murad Teumini, and Rufobs, Mainza Kangombe. We have not obviously been able to fit every expert who is in the continent on this, but we have got another summit that is coming towards the end of the year, and it will be another opportunity for us to reach out to another uh, community in Africa uh, so that we, we learn about what each and everyone is working on and we get ideas from each and everyone. Uh, so I will be sharing details on that. I've got, uh, we've shared, we have shared the details on the newsletter as well. Reach out to me or Karim and we can share finer details on that. And don't miss out on the career fair and the cocktail hour for virtual networking as well, so that you build, uh, you know, relationships for yourself. You also 
uh, get to connect with the global community and build other relationships that can take you forward in one way or another. Um, you can check out One Quantum Africa on these different links. Uh, we've got a website, www.quantum.org slash Africa. You see a lot of uh, the other things that we have done. We've got a YouTube playlist, which you can enjoy at your pleasure. We've got our advisors showcased there. The people will give us ideas and support us each and every day to say, how do we move this forward for the continent? Uh, we've got a newsletter on Substack. You, as shared there, you can send us your CV. Like I told, talked about in terms of careers, um, if you're interested in a career in quantum, there are no prerequisites for this. You just send your CV if you're interested in a career in quantum. You may be somebody who has been in classical tech, who wants to transition. You may be somebody, a graduate, a postdoc, somebody just looking for opportunities. Everybody's welcome. There they are no... Uh, what can I say? There are no natives in quantum. Everybody is welcome in the community. So submit your CVs and let it be the job of our career partners to, to look at those and make decisions and reach out to you. You can contact me at farai.strabadas.com. You can enjoy some free resources on the quantum tech ecosystem, like what I'm going to share after this slide on qisdata.com. And you can reach out to us if you need any other data that you're not seeing. Uh, we are, will be happy to put that together and make, uh, you know, uh, and give you access to that and uh, figure out a way of supporting anything that you're working on. So um, now let's move on to the topic of the day. Uh, now that we have, uh, you know, established that solid foundation on what's happening in, in Africa, what can we do, where can we come together and how can we take this forward? So now let's put African context to say what is happening in the global quantum tech ecosystem so that we are aware of what's happening around us. And then we we're going to look Hello. Hi. I, uh, I can hear you. Mr. Farai, I think uh, Mr. Farai is facing a technical problem. Okay, he will join one more time. Just a second. Mr. Farai, you can now unmute yourself. Um, please unmute yourself. Mr. Fry, you can mute, unmute yourself, I'm sorry. C can you hear me? Um, Mr. Fry, can you hear me? Please unmute yourself.
Um, please unmute yourself. Sure, thank you, Ken. Okay, great, great. Sounds good. Sorry for that. I'm not sure That's why okay. was still. That's honest. okay. No problem. Sure. So anyway, we were on um, the global quantum tech ecosystem and why we. Um, I think uh, your connection is lost one more time. OK, can, can you can you sign in one more time, please? Um, can you please sign out and then sign in again? Okay, can I proceed? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, that is perfect. So the That's okay. We still have some time. Please go ahead. Um, I don't think we can hear you. Hello? Can anyone hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'm just okay. wondering why my app keeps stopping. <laughs> okay, it's okay, it's okay. Um, now I can hear you. Now I can hear you. I tried, I, I tried a different network. Let's see if uh, that works. Let's hope so. Sure, man. Anyway, so um, I was talking about the global quantum tech ecosystem, and um, I was saying this is it's very important for us to look at the global quantum tech so that we are able to uh, place our.
Um, I don't think I can hear you. Um, can can you please join join in again, please? Um, can you please unmute yourself? Yes, I just did. I did to update the app as well. And let's hope that solves the problem. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's hope so, man. So I'm just trying to get to the slide where I was. Uh, slide number seven, right? Or, or six? Sure. Sure. So slide number seven should have in the next one. So, yeah. It's still loading on my end, so I'm not sure if I can proceed. Okay, I'm back to presenter mode. Thank you. Um, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm not sure what is not. Karim, I'm not sure what is not right, but something just stops uh, somewhere. I don't know why. Okay, no problem. Um, I think uh, I think you can go now. Please go ahead. Sure, I hope I can. I hope it works out, man. So anyway, we were we were saying the, we want to look broadly at the quantum tech ecosystem. Just figure out how, what's happening out there and where are we and uh, what can we learn and how are the people doing. Mr. Farai, can you hear me? Hello? 
Hello. Can you hear me now, Karim? Hello, Karim. Yes, I can hear you, Mr. Farah. You yes. can go on. If you oh, can. okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let's hope I've tried using my PC. And let's hope it works now. So anyway, we were trying to go to, to put African context, and I would want to start with a quote that was um, that was published in the Fortune magazine in June of 2019, where it said uh, what I think is, is the truth about quantum technologies and why we you hear so much about it and why there is a lot of uh, excitement about it, as well as a lot of fear as well about it. Uh, hype as well is part of the... Is, 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 um, is part of what we see, but however, it is because quantum technology has got uh, an impact uh, that will perhaps equal what we have seen with the, the current wave of technology that we enjoy today. So perhaps no other emerging technology spans so many different disciplines with so many potential applications. So when you look at the fact that you have got uh, quantum sensing and metrology, we have got quantum communications, where you also have quantum key distribution. Um, you realize that it, it is a really a, a far-reaching industry and discipline, and there are a lot of opportunities. This is the why it is important to bring everyone together across disciplines, not only in physics, uh, so that we are able to collaborate and build solutions and make the technology useful and uh, you know meaningful in our own lives um and right so i try to look at industries where quantum tech shows promise so to just give this uh, uh, foundation before we look at the ecosystem because as we look at the ecosystem you will begin to see the actual players uh, but uh, these are some of the broad categories where we think quantum shows promise and um, it's got chemistry health and pharmaceuticals uh, and uh, those uh, subcategories where we, we, we see a promise uh, is protein folding, drug discovery, bioinformatics, catalysts and fertilizers. And looking at Africa, having so much land 
and the growing young population, the need to feed our population is, uh, you know, it's very clear. And there is need, we know that one of the drivers, one of the major cost drivers in agriculture is fertilizer and figuring out how to produce fertilizer efficiently is, is going to be very important. And it is something that seizes your computational chemists each and every day. Um, there's so much in terms of energy that is required in order to produce fertilizer. And uh, when we reduce that uh, and find better catalysts, uh, and I think the motivation is when we look at how bacteria uh, like um, nitrogenous do, do uh, nitrogen fixation, you know, it's so straightforward and so easy for the bacteria to do it. So that's nature doing it. And if we can uh, copy nature, then we may be able to find optimal ways of, of doing the same as well. So this is the reason why, you know, quantum uh, techniques and quantum computation, quantum computing is associated with nature. It is because uh, when we have these quantum systems, we are going to be able to get closer and closer to how nature realizes uh, some of these things. So when you look at the active players in that space, you find companies like BASF, uh, MEC, uh, Bayer, DuPont, uh, they are already, you know, involved in partnerships with companies that are building um, algorithms that are building quantum computers to figure out how quantum computers can be used in these uh, spaces. Uh, we also have got industrial, uh, the industrial manufacturing, mining, uh, broadly like that. We see that quantum technology has got the promise to impact logistics which is mainly your optimization of routes. It could be for shipping, it could be, you know, just how goods move from one place to another. So um, that's an important problem to solve. And we have already seen a lot of developments in the space and companies that are coming together and collaborating to work on those, to work on solving problems in logistics, in traffic optimization. I think recently Australian, I think it's the, the New South Wales government in Australia has uh, partnered with some players in, in quantum to try and figure out if they can come up with a solution for on, on traf traffic optimization. Uh, cheap layout optimization to build the devices that we are all waiting for. We will take a lot of effort in terms of uh, how do you arrange the qubits such that you optimize how they work together to give us um, the, the uh, power, the promise of power uh, of, of, of the quantum devices. Uh, solar cells and uh, uh, OLED development, uh, which are orga organic uh, light emitting diodes. So we all know that uh, current solar panels are not very efficient. The last time that I checked when I was looking for a solar system myself, I was disappointed to see that uh, they get to 18 and just about 22% for, uh, for the best panels. And so it means there's a lot of effort that is required to optimize on, on, on solar cells. You can imagine that if you're going to have your whole uh, roof surface covered by solar panels, you're only going to get 20 to 18 to 22 percent of, of that surface area in terms of effectiveness. So a lot of work has to be done in that space. We see VW, Airbus, BMW, NASA, Bosch, Daimler uh, working on some tangible solutions in that space. And then that includes uh, batteries for electric vehicles as well figuring out how to improve the energy density of batteries so that we reduce and remove range anxiety when it comes to using electric vehicles. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, information technology, machine learning, neural networks, uh, some of you are already hooked up on this. And uh, I think recently IBM has tweaked uh, QSkit uh, to optimize it, especially the machine learning uh, um, uh, the machine learning modules, uh, if, 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 you know, recently got a touch up to make them much more easy, easier to use uh, for people who may not even have a background in, in physics or, or such, you know, depth in terms of knowledge uh, of, of um, quantum mechanics. Um, database search, Grover's algorithms and some such, um, and they are quantum inspired algorithms that are coming up where because of our understanding of quantum mechanics and seeing how quantum um, 
algorithms uh, behave and the kind of promise they give, we can also figure out how to use those same techniques and improve classical algorithms. Um, cyber security and cryptography, uh, which is uh, an interesting space where there's a lot of fear about what happens if uh, tomorrow we've got a quantum computer. And I think I was reading an article recently which uh, says to us, uh, you know, there, for example, if for some of you may remember uh, the Y2K, so that was when, you know, computers had to comply by the year 2000, uh, there was going to be uh, a shift in how, um, you know, classical computers uh, were handling this whole aspect of dates and and stuff. And, you know, it, it was something that, you know, who, uh, received a lot of attention back then. So perhaps uh, because, uh, of course, capable quantum computers are not yet there. I don't know how far they are from, you know, being real, but a lot of progress is being made uh, very fast in terms of the hardware, in terms of the software, and in terms of understanding the, the, the physics itself. So nobody knows. So the, while it's there are naysayers and people are going to say, ah, well, cyber security as it is, uh, you know, classically, you know, it, it is fine. Maybe if we, we um, if we relax, we may be shocked when a universal quantum computer has realized one of these days, uh, which could be one of these years or one of these decades, whichever you, you want. I don't have direct answers to that. But uh, we are saying it is important to prepare for such a future because the moment, since we know it is possible, uh, my knowing of human ingenuity and how you know the power of the human mind uh, what it conceives, it usually achieves. And uh, there was a time when people didn't even think that we we're going to have NISC uh, devices, which are noisy intermediate scale quantum devices that we have now on the cloud. But uh, we have them today and we can play with them today. You can connect to a quantum computer, actual quantum computer today. But there was a time when that wasn't uh, imaginable. So yes, uh, IBM, Alibaba, Google, Samsung, Microsoft, uh, some of the active people, uh, people, active players in this space, finance, trading strategies, portfolio optimization, asset pricing, risk analysis, market simulation, and uh, there are companies today, startups, uh, um, who are working on the, these aspects today. So yes, their solutions may not be viable, commercial, or uh, you know, bring so much value today, but something is happening, and that is what is important. Uh, JP Morgan, Barclays, Goldman Sachs, ING, um, and a number of other banks are involved in this. Bankia uh, involved in, 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 in this as well, and even insurance companies uh, as well, um, noticing and taking attention. So yeah, thanks to Denise for bringing this to my attention, and that's where I, I, I got this slide from here on one of the discussions. Um, so yes, through my conversation with Denise as well, so we were just trying to reflect on what has been the quantum uh, tech ecosystem like back then. So when this guy started, uh, when Denise was still at IBM, uh, and she, said, she shared this slide with me and said, look, this is where we were. One of your first presentations um, is an IBM uh, quantum um, ambassador, and she's the one who was involved in bringing, building the IBM Q uh, um, network hub, which brought startups together and to, uh, to work with IBM to figure out how to move the field forward. So the, the, in January of 2018, there were about eight to 10 quantum computing startups, and uh, that's Riverland, it's in quantum software in the UK, the yeah, software is called Del Delta Flow, uh, OS, QX branch, uh, now uh, acquired by Rigetti, um, so to make Rigetti a full stack uh, quantum player, Strange Works, uh, we had these guys on one Quantum Africa meetings last week, like I said, build a beautiful platform which streamlines work for us as the public and for companies as well. Uh, Zapata done a very good job in the space and they are working uh, very hard in quantum machine learning and and many other things. Uh, quantum benchmark, uh, 
helping the hardware players to benchmark their hardware and you know develop uh, develop capable hardware faster one qubit in canada involved in quantum software and qc where uh q control in australia cambridge quantum computing so these were the only startups and perhaps a few that are missing here but there were not so many um in the interest of time let me try to catch up uh so um yes we'll see about uh, alice and bob as we go uh, so um so that was in 2018 so yes uh, alice and bob came in 2020 uh quantum tech ecosystem global overview to give us a glimpse of what's happening so governments are investing a lot in this space it's more like an arms race some call it uh, where nobody wants to stand behind and i think we have seen ever since the biden administration came on board that uh, they are trying so hard to cover ground and uh, catch up with china which shows public investment of 11 billion there some uh, estimate that there is a lot more that they are investing in this space and if you read uh, they are they are uh, newspapers for sure there's a lot of work that they're doing building a quantum city in fa and doing a lot of things really um we, we have germany investing almost up to 5 billion now and counting in 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 quantum so the, these countries are seeing they are looking for new pockets of growth in terms of economic development uh, and in terms of uh, you know improving from where we are so this is why we're seeing a lot of money flowing into the into the space and as you see the us was a laggard and now it's trying to catch up it, it started investing in this space seriously i think uh, from 2020 or around there so they haven't been putting so much money into the space but now they are working so hard to to put a lot of money into quantum and to catch up france there doing a lot of good work uh, i think we have seen recently the netherlands should be should have moved from here this slide was done um, um a month ago so there's about uh, 615 million euros that has been uh, in, uh, pledged by the netherlands government and that should lift uh, the netherlands to the billion uh, investment in quantum space so generally we see beyond 30 billion us dollars invested by governments and public entities into quantum so when we look at public investments we're just looking by investments that have been done by government in research in quantum hubs in accelerators in uh, any such efforts where members of the public and the companies have got access to to these resources not directly in startups so that kind of funding is missing from here. If the government have invested in startups, then it's, it's not reflected here. So definitely there's a bit more that governments have done as well, because they have also been investing directly in startups. So this is just a general view of the quantum tech ecosystem. Um, as we see it, uh, I just am showing the map here to say the United States there, we see a lot of activity in Europe. This is Israel. We uh, see India, there, uh, China, Japan, um, Australia. So yes, Africa is missing in action. Um, we've done a lot, perhaps, in terms of nanotechnology, photonics, uh, and other things. But we, we don't have any serious quantum initiative that I'm aware of. I know that in South Africa, they have a fourth industrial revolution um, commission and the blueprint um but we we yet to see uh, governments committing to this obviously covid came on came came on the way as well and governments had to look at other priorities but it is something that we we'll, we need to be perhaps we're going to see change as we go and this is why we want to gather the, we want to gather the ecosystem uh well we want to we want to gather everybody together and and uh, you know, figure out what we need to do. If we decide that to encourage our governments to invest in this space, or, or it is about um, you know just getting investment in, in into quantum in one way or another. 
So yes, we, we reach out to um, seasoned um, specialists in the space like uh, Professor Yunis and say, what should we do in order to see a bit of change in this space? If ever that is important to move quantum forward in Africa, then how can it be done? And what kind of conversation should we have with yeah. who really is, uh, is that? Um, <clears throat> So these are the quantum hardware companies. Uh, currently, we see 59 companies working on quantum computing hardware. And when I say hardware, I'm not looking at the components that are part of quantum computers. We are looking at the people who are producing the actual quantum processor in one form or another. Not anything that supports, uh, that could be your cryogenics, that could be your cryogenics, that could be your other things that uh, enable quantum processors to work, so we exclude that. We're just looking at the actual hardware, the actual quantum processor. Um, so these are the companies that we see, QERA, Listen Bob, AQT, Code Quanda, Brand Cell, Next Gen, Quicks in the Netherlands, CQC, they've got an Italian, UK, and US BES, Black Simo, C12 in France, um, IBM, Honeywell, your, your big vendors uh, as well that we have always known in one way or another in terms of classical technologies and are also coming through for, for quantum. Um, quantum hardware companies by funding, a very interesting one. So uh, as of the 28th of March 2021, we had this kind of uh, funding in quantum hardware companies. Obviously, a lot of money has been moving into quantum hardware companies because we need capable hardware for quantum computers. We don't have that yet. Yes, we are seeing some progress, but we don't have a universal quantum computer yet. So there are still toy models that allow us to learn more about the technology, to figure out how best we can use them, and they are being improved each and every day. Um, IonQ uh, recently um, going public via SPAC, which is a special purpose acquisition company. Um, they saw that exit was at a uh, value of 899 million. Uh, of course, the yeah, valuation uh, on the public market, I think it's around 2 billion. Uh, Sai Quantum, we recently heard from Jeremy, and uh, we, we are happy to see that a lot of progress is being made. I think they had a publication as well recently to show some progress in terms of quantum error correction and how they think they can be able to tackle that. D-Wave, um, the oldest one in the game and um, doing a lot more to establish this. They, they use a different technique called quantum annealing. It is specialized for optimization problems. It's not get best. It's not uh, going to be, you know, for for every problem as we envisage for universal quantum computing. But they're doing so. They, they, they've done their bit and uh, they're still doing. Uh, I think recently made their new quantum annealers available on the cloud through Ocean, I think, which is their platform. Unfortunately, they don't, uh, we don't have access on their platform, hardware, the cloud platform from Africa. Been in touch with them. I don't know why, though. Uh, we wish we could play with those annealers as well. Rigetti. Um, we also see, what else do we see? Yes, um, Alice and Bob, which was mentioned in the chat. Yeah, they, raised, uh, they are from France. They've raised the 3.3 million. Pascal, they're also from France, 8.5 million. So yeah, a lot of uh, progress uh, being made in hardware there and a lot of players that we see here. Then we've got quantum software companies, uh, which we see here. Um, so when I say software, these are people or companies rather that are developing some, these are companies that are developing some capabilities that allow quantum hardware to communicate with the uh, quantum hardware to communicate with the uh, um, quantum hardware to communicate with the uh, uh, with the user, just like the operating systems that we use, like Windows operating system. So there is that drive to also make uh, operating systems that allow us to communicate with quantum hardware. So these are the companies. So we tried to exclude those that are working in algorithms, which we feel are more like customer facing. 
so these are um, your quantum software companies that we see here, one QB, diagnostic, labor quantum, they all allow us to be able to play with the quantum hardware. So um, they give you that foundation where for those that are working on algorithms, you can begin to be able to uh, make the best use of, uh, of uh, for quantum hardware as it is available today. Quantum software companies by funding. This is what we see. Cambridge Quantum Computing uh, got the bigger chunk of the funding there. Zapata close by, one qubit from Canada, River Lane, uh, building the quantum operating system in the UK. I think they are the ones that have been chosen by government to lead that effort so that they build a, a quantum operating system. Q control in Australia, classic in Israel. We have also seen Israel taking a lot of uh, space in quantum uh, in terms of uh, um, the contribution, in terms of expertise, in terms of the investment. And uh, we're going to see shortly as I show the next slide. So we see, um, I was just trying to show you differently how you know the, the, uh, the stacks look in quantum software startups. Uh, so Cambridge Quantum leading there, and uh, we've got um, Fairscraft from the UK, Aliro from the US, uh, you name it. Okay, so in terms of progress, uh, this is, I just took a glimpse of the news that came out in the past few weeks to just show you how the fast progress that is being made in the space. So IBM's, for example, here we see IBM's new tool that I was talking about, less developers add quantum computing power to machine learning, um, quantum brilliance and quantum south, uh, which is from um, Latin America, kind of brilliant from Australia. So we see a lot of collaboration across continents, across countries where people are coming together, companies are coming together to figure out how to, uh, you know, build solutions and solve problems. Um, also, we see the quantum computers that are available today in their, you know, limited, in limited with their limitations, are able to do some very important simulations which is what Richard Feynman always envisaged that uh, we, if we needed to, to simulate nature, which is what gives us the chemicals and, and gives us um, uh, solutions could be for better batteries, better chemistry, building um, a drug, finding you know, uh, how to make the best uh, uh, drugs in terms of drug discovery, protein folding, you name it. Um, we need to simulate those systems on a quantum computer and we're seeing important simulations have already been done to like here yeah, better batteries start with basics and these guys simulated uh, a solvent to understand how they could use it uh, to drive the green energy revolution we recently heard from nvidia uh, building an sdk uh, uh, software development kit to accelerate quantum information science so that uh, those people who are you know, researchers in this space can simulate using GPUs, that can simulate uh, quantum hardware and uh, you know, uh, take their research forward. Um, quantum Delta Netherlands awarded the 650 million, I think we talked about this. Uh, realization of a multi-node quantum network of remote solid state qubits. So this takes us to a quantum internet where we are going to be able to interface these devices from different places, combine their power, and perhaps that's the way we are going to get to universal quantum computing faster. Uh, ion Q system, which are based on trapped ion uh, technology now available on QSKIT. So beyond the superconducting qubits that IBM uses, we are also seeing this collaboration where all the major hardware players are making their hardware available on each other's platforms to allow developers, to allow researchers, to allow solution builders to have those options and play with the different hardware's and find out what are the optimal ways to move the field forward. Um, government departments like the military, you know, releasing roadmaps for quantum technologies. Recently, military in Australia uh, released the roadmap for quantum technologies to figure out which technologies they can harness and use in order to, uh, you know, to develop more resilience in the battlefront and to build uh, other capabilities that are important for their work. 
Iran launches phase three of three of tests on quantum key distribution. So I'm just trying to show how the different countries, even some that we have not heard about, uh, you know, there is a, a bit of development um, on, on quantum, and uh, uh, you know, it's, it's it's across the board. Almost each and every country that is serious in science and tech is 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 figuring out one or two things about quantum tech uh, with its vastness. Um, Israel, well, I think Amazon came uh, came together with the research, research universities in Israel to collaborate uh, beyond Amazon bracket and figure out how to to work together and just move this field forward. The Raman Research Institute achieves quantum communication breakthrough, duality. It's an accelerator recently conceived and you know recently put together in Chicago in the U.S. And there are a lot of other things that, that are happening in the ecosystem to just show us that there is progress that is happening. Fast progress, like I said, fast progress, like, like I said, very important progress and something that uh, is exciting for those of us who are, who are eager to see this field moving forward. Right, so where are we? So there is a lot that we can do from Africa. So I just uh, took this uh, screenshot from one of the slides that I've used for something else to say, you know, I contributed to the field from South Africa using uh, devices available on the cloud. We could come up with a protocol that we think others can look at, critique, improve, uh, expand, you name it, um, without access to the actual hardware, because some of the capabilities to develop hardware like IBM and other players in the ecosystem um, have got very good hardware because they have so much money to put into that space to get the cryogenics right, to get the best components, to get access to the best fabrication labs, build the best chips uh, that are very stable and uh, you know uh, very good, such that we can access them. We can begin to play with them. We can use them to simulate, to do whatever. As long as we've got an internet connection, you've got a laptop, you can go on GitHub, you can download an SDK, you can you can begin playing with those devices. And there still is a lot of work to be done in terms of optimizing the devices. So, for example, education and evangelism of quantum technology is also very important. For example, one of the reasons why it may we may not have seen significant investments in Africa may not necessarily be to do with the resources. It could be that governments and those uh, um, uh, stakeholders, <coughs> excuse me, are not aware uh, of the importance of quantum technology. So it is up to you and me to perhaps uh, talk about quantum technologies and uh, separate hype from reality for, 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 for these players and allow them, you know, remove those friction points and allow them to come forward and put some investments into, into quantum tech. So some of the work could be to engage with researchers and domain specialists and then users to encourage that interaction and intersection of these various players, because this is the only way we are going to build solutions, because solutions are, going to, are not going to be built by researchers alone. There are people who understand the problems that we have to solve, uh, and policymakers have to put an enabling environment to support that to happen. So we all want all these people to be engaged, to, to find, to make it easy for these people to communicate. And that is a job for you and me to do. There is still is a lot of work to do in terms of integration of quantum hardware, software, and support technology. I'll quickly just jump through this, developing quantum simulation applications, pursuing new approaches to materials design, fabrication, and characterization, um, creating new modalities and applications for quantum sensing in situ and in vivo. Uh, using entanglement in quantum computers to improve measurements. So while this may be focused on computing, there may be uh, there are many other things, even in sensing, that we could consider as well. Um, recently, I was reading about an article that is looking at optimizing treatment planning using radio uh, therapy machines, and and that is something that is very very important as well. So even improving sensing for MRI to make the resolution even better. So there is. There are a lot of areas to contribute. Uh, developing foundational components for quantum networks, and, you know, performance of qubit uh, performance. So you need these that need to be tested 
uh, you know, now that we've got different hardware platforms, we need to find out whether they are suited to different problems or we can, you know, how, how best can we take advantage of them or of their properties today as well as in the future. So in the, the people who are exploring how we can use NISCI devices to already solve important problems. And uh, that is important work. There are also people who are involved to say, when we have the actual devices that are capable, how are the solutions going to look like? So there is a lot of work to do, a lot of contribution that uh, each and every one of us can, and can uh, we, uh, has a role to play. Um, in conclusion, if you've got any questions, ideas, suggestions, and comments, let's talk about them now. You can connect with me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, GitHub, and on my personal website. I'm very sorry about our experience uh, earlier. It was just uh, technology misbehaving for one reason or another, but I'm happy we were able to recover and hey, to get okay. to the end of this presentation. Thank it's okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I, I actually have some some questions for you uh, regarding uh, you know the career summit and uh, how, for example, can the community in Egypt contribute to this uh, to this mentorship program? That is the first thing. The second thing is the uh, the career summit thing. How can we uh, how can we participate in such a huge event uh, for for the African continent? Thank you very much for that question. Very important one <clears throat> and pertinent too. So um, the first thing is obviously to RSVP. So let's be there in our numbers, uh, you know, from across Africa. And uh, everybody should sign up today or whenever they get time. So we want to have as many participants as possible from the continent. Secondly, it's about also uh, inviting other people from the broader ecosystem that you know that you think are important to in order to be part of this discussion in this platform to move quantum forward um we are also taking ideas on speakers for our next um summit already uh, i've got a few slots uh, i think in in terms of business and investments somebody from the business and investment community who can come and be part of a panel which is going to discuss how we can move quantum forward in the continent if you have got such or you are interested to participate as such, please reach out to me and let me know. Um, so yes, it's about reach. Let's also talk about the event on our different social media platforms so that we promote it and we just make it happen for Africa. Then I'm going to talk about the membership program. Um, <clears throat> send an email to me um, or if you are signed up to the newsletter, there are already links that we have provided there sign up before the end of day uh, eastern time in the u.s uh, tomorrow so that you can be considered you can be merged with menders uh, and you can have that opportunity if you also want to be a mender as well please please we are running uh, short on menders as well because we received so many applications to mm -hmm. be great to have menders from africa so so, so you're, you're saying that we can we can apply uh, as a mentor or uh, as a mentee for sure, yes. We okay. need more mentors from Africa and, and from across the globe as well. What what type what type of projects um are there? You know, um what what are the expectations at the end? Um the expectations are, are not hard and fast because they depend on the, the cohort of students that we or of Mendy of Mendes that we have really. So that's something that we're going to figure out. And uh, there are people who are in charge of that, and there's a platform where this is being done. Unfortunately, I don't have finer details, but uh, I can find that out for you and uh, share that information as soon as I have it. Okay, great, great. Uh, <clears throat> and what what about the um, the career part that you mentioned uh, that you mentioned earlier? So the career fair and the career part that we I mentioned earlier. You simply all you have to do is to have an interest in a career in quantum. Then you submit your CV on the email that I shared, which is Brooke at onequantum.org. Uh, we put it in uh, in the pool, so we could just we, we have let's call it a database where we simply keep these things. And our career partners every now and then request for information or come on those and access them and pick them up, depending on what they are looking for. 
So I've seen that they indicated that we don't have so much from Africa and they are eager to look at CVs of people from Africa in case, you know, they, they have opportunities for them. I don't okay. know. That's, that's, that's great. That's great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, um, is, is there anyone here who would like to ask Mr. Farai uh, anything about One Quantum Africa or uh, other mentioned activities? Um, uh, actually, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Farai a short question. I'd like to first thank him for this uh, inspiring uh, talk. Uh, 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 as usual, he, he showed us that uh, there is a lot of work to do uh, about uh, uh, quantum computing in Africa. Uh, and I'd like to ask him uh, how, how many countries uh, are contributing in one quantum Africa uh, so far? In Africa, I mean. So far in Africa, I think a ballpark figure of around 15 or so. Um, but uh, Unfortunately, some of the people who connect from the countries in Africa are in the diaspora, so they get to learn about us from the diaspora and come come through. So we would be happy if we had more of the local people, but we are trying to work with those people in the diaspora to reach out to reach with the local communities. So yeah, around 15 would be would be a fair figure, and it's always changing each and every day as as people learn about our activities and the word goes out. And did did so, yeah. Egypt counted in in these 15 countries? Sure, Egypt <laughs> being one of the strong uh, countries that has been giving us support. <laughs> oh, thank you. And also, thank you very much for the important work we are doing with the group. Something that we are happy to use as a foundational effort that shows us that it's possible to happen in Africa. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Farah. I appreciate it. Okay, um, can, can we know... Um, the participants from from Egypt itself. Um, uh, Sorry, I didn't hear you, Karim. Uh, uh, I mean the uh, the participants from 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 Egypt and in, in one quantum Africa. Uh, I may not be able to give you a number right away because sometimes it's very difficult to. I haven't sat down to really make those. Um, uh, distinctions, um, uh, but I think there is a very strong community in North Africa, is what I'm aware, which could be Morocco, Egypt, Tunisia, uh, Libya. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I can get that information for you, but I don't have it on my fingertips at the moment. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, um, is there any question from the audience? Okay, I, I think not. So I'm, um, I'm looking forward to, uh, to, uh, to this great uh, career summit in, in, in May, and uh, thank, thank you so much for today, and thank you so much for, for your, uh, for your inspiring talk. Thank you very much, Karim. Always a pleasure, and all the best with what you're working on, and see you in the other platforms. And yes, let's gather Africa and bring it together. One yes. more time. And, and also, uh, congratulations on Q Zimbabwe. I just heard the news. Oh, yes, we're still, we're still conceiving it. So, yeah, yeah. When, the, when those guys have run their first successful workshop, we'll congratulate them. But all the same, I will capture their, con their congratulations from you and keep them to myself until those guys have, uh, have run their workshop. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. And thanks to Sarah for supporting that as well. So, yeah, we really appreciate it. Yeah. And for Q Egypt to lead by example, because I think you are the youngest at the moment in Africa. So we are uh -huh. following yeah. after you. It's really great. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. And um, I believe I will stop. I will stop recording right now. Just a second.